A couple of weeks ago, I was lucky enough to be invited to a local school to meet and talk about astronomy to some of the children there. I uh, had a really good time talking about things like asteroids and meteors and the upcoming solar eclipse. Now, there's so many questions that we didn't get a chance to answer them all while I was there. So what we're going to do is rather than answer them in emails, we've got the questions here. Uh, I'm going to have a go at answering them together with Vince Bargraves, part-time attic support engineer and part-time expert in astronomy. And the questions will be answered by Joe, who's our communications officer. So here we go. Right, our first question is from Mitchell, who is asking what will happen to the sun in five billion years time? Vince? Oh, the sun in about five billion years time is going to turn, like, they think it's going to turn into a red giant, which is when it swells up. It's going to swell up to the orbit of Mars-ish area. Um, after that, it will turn into a planetary nebula, and then after about 14 billion years, it will turn into a white dwarf, which is a, which is a very small, dense um, object. Excellent. Sounds good. Right, so Steve, uh, Daniel is asking, will another planet crash into Earth? That's a good question. Uh, the chances of another planet from another solar system crashing into the Earth is just absolutely tiny. So really what we're talking about here is whether or not one of the planets in our solar system at the moment could possibly crash into Earth. Could Jupiter come and crash into Earth? And the answer is no, not unless it got disturbed by something else coming close to our solar system. So in the, in the foreseeable future, absolutely no. Uh, in the very, very distant future, maybe a star comes close to our sun and disturbs the planets again, and maybe something like Jupiter will move into the inner solar system, in which case it would happen, but not in the foreseeable future. And next up, do stars turn into meteors? And that's from Kaylee Ann. That's, that's got to be a yes, really, I would have thought. Jump in. <laughs> try, try and justify that one. <laughs> eventually, when a star does finish its life, it does blow up and throws off all its um, minerals and this and the other parts, internal parts. And um, these are left sort of distributed around in a cloud. And what happens with the uh, new planets form, new suns, sorry, form, um, parts are left over, and this is where um, meteors come from in the first place. There we go. Yep. Right. Uh, so, how were all the other planets formed? And that's by Jason. Okay, uh, this we could talk all, all year about this, but we're not going to. It was quickly as possible. It's the inner planets were formed from rocky material because in near the sun it was very, very hot, and the only thing that could be solid near the sun was rock. As we move further out when the planets were being formed, then things like ice had a chance to condense and some of the gas was able to make the gas giants further out. Uh, so how were the planets formed? Basically two, two different types. The rocky planets were formed close into the sun where it was hot and the ice giants, gas giants, were formed further out where it was cold. Well, quite a nice follow-on from that is how is an asteroid made? And that's by Kenny. Yeah, again, that's gone back to the answers for the last two questions, really. The ast asteroids are made from the bits left over after a sun has exploded and the parts are floating around, around a sort of new sun which is then forming there, which is where, where stars come from. Um, they are the bits left over which aren't large enough to form planets of themselves. They aren't large enough to have a sufficient gravity to pull other clumps towards them to, to form a planet. There you go. Uh, Joshua is asking, how did the meteor hit our planet? I'm guessing that's referring to the dinosaur extinction meteor. I think the one I'd actually show was the one, the crater in Arizona, meteor crater. And the answer was, very quickly. It, <laughs> it hit the planet very, very quickly indeed. Uh, uh, I do, uh, I'm not sure that we've got exact speed on there, have we? No. Uh, no. no, okay then, so uh, how did it hit? Probably the other thing, just a quick say, that it wasn't the gravity of the Earth that, that attracted the asteroid in. Uh, everything in the solar system is dominated by the sun's gravity, so there were two objects that were in orbit around the sun, and it just happened that the two orbits crossed each other, and effectively then the Earth and this meteor collided together and it was quick. Right. Uh, so Thomas is wondering what is the largest comet? 
Okay, comets vary greatly in their size and uh, um, size look like in the sky. Um, but going back for the last sort of 10 years or so, um, Comet Book Nought in 2007 was one of the largest ones recently. It's, the tail of it was 35 degrees across in the space, in the sky, sorry, which was about 70 full moons in length, you know, put side by side. Bigger than Holmes? I think so. Because Holmes was big. It was a, was a 70 moon sizes. I didn't count. Yeah, so this, this is the old bit with sizes of comets. Okay. <laughs> right, and what is their fastest shooting star? That's from Thomas. Uh, this is another good question. Uh, if you Google the answer, it's between 25 and 100,000 miles per hour, which is incredibly quick. Uh, one thing you've got to just kind of bear in mind with this is that the Earth is rotating around the Sun at about 50,000 miles per hour. So if the poor little dust of sand or ground sand in space is stationary, it's going to get swept up or hit by the Earth moving 50,000 miles an hour and then appear to be moving. So the things might actually not be moving at all and it might just be the Earth that's kind of sweeping them up. <coughs> but it will appear to us to be moving between 25 and 100,000 miles per hour when it enters. And from Katie, one that should possibly concern us all, is our <laughs> comet big enough to destroy Norfolk? <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. Go on. The, <laughs> the answer is going to be yes, they are, but will they? It's probably no. The um, main thing being, comets are made of ice for a start off, um, so they're going to be reduced in size as they approach the sun, sort of get as close as our um, planet is to the sun. So, have you got any thoughts on that? Oh, really I think it's just so unlikely. Yes, they could. If that actually hits, yes, it would. Uh, it would destroy Norfolk. It also created Norfolk in many ways because lots of the water on Earth was brought here by comets. So, uh, in, in the past, uh, they both helped to create Norfolk. And they're not going to actually come and destroy Norfolk. But uh, if one did, then yes, it would be big enough. But it's not going to happen. Right, so from Thomas, is the meteor rocks look like ordinary rocks? <laughs> Would you like me to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, go, you go for that one, yes. Uh, whenever I've seen them, uh, they're fairly dark in colour because as they've come in through the atmosphere they've got very, very hot and they've kind of burnt and they have a fairly dark colour. They're also fairly rough surfaces so they're not like pebbles you'd find on a stream. Uh, if you slice them in two, they tend to have quite a crystalline structure, so there's quite a lot of, they actually look quite interesting if you do uh, cut them in two. And apparently if you try tapping them with a magnet, they usually have enough iron in them that they are vaguely magnetic. Here we go. Yep. And why do we have the sun? That's from Ellie. Um. <laughs> Did you want to take that one? <laughs> well, I could do, but um, the, the, the sun is basically what gives us life. If the sun wasn't there, we wouldn't be here. Our planet wouldn't have formed in the first place. And um, the sunlight provides all the energy on Earth, um, really. So we need the sun. And what shape are the stars? And that's from Sophie. Okay, when we draw stars, we tend to draw them with pointy, kind of star-shaped uh, pointy bits. That's trying to give the idea that they kind of twinkle in the sky. Uh, if we look at them, they're so far away that we can't tell what size they are just with our eyes, they effectively are points. If we get close up to them, we can kind of, well, if we look at them through telescopes and if we look at our sun, which is a star, it's actually a ball and they're all controlled by gravity, so they're all spherical. Uh, just quickly add on that, like everything in the solar system, everything rotates. And because these are made of gas stars, you tend to end up with the this, the equator is wider than if you look at the pole to pole. So they're kind of a squashed ball. It's the answer. Excellent. And um, how big is the sun? And that's from Lewis. I've written the answer down there. Written the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steve's answer to that is 4 million kilometres in diameter. Would that be right? No, it's not. Right. That, that's <laughs> from the expert. Didn't look up Is that, that roughly a hundred Earth diameters across? That could be. As Brian yeah. Cox said last week. That sounds very <laughs> right. <laughs> and how big was the meteor that hit Earth? That's from Joseph. Who's that one for? Uh, you. for me. Okay, yeah. right then. Uh, again, 
of oh, that's about forty five meters. Forty five meters. You're this is the one. Right? This is the one on Meteor Crater. So it was mainly iron. It was incredibly heavy. It wasn't that big. So forty five meters is as far as you can run in about ten seconds or so. I'd imagine. So not too big, but it was very very heavy and it was moving very very quickly. And what was the last comet to be formed from Holly? Um, I'm glad you got that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, comets. Uh, comets were formed 4.6 million years ago, according to what I just read a little while ago. But whether that's correct or not, I don't know. <laughs> this is um, way back in the Wikipedia. Yeah, that is. Yeah, um, comets live in the thing called the Oort cloud, which is outside the. Um, outside the solar system, well not outside the solar system, but on the edge of our solar system. They sort of whirl around in there and then they, every now and then, due to gravity, they do an egg-shaped orbit and come towards us, or towards our sun, come in, is that correct? That sounds, you think sounds that's fine, right? I think that was on Wikipedia. I I know, that, that, well, that bit wasn't on Wikipedia, <laughs> but the uh, 4.6 million years uh, ago was. Okay. Um, currently there are 5,253 known comets um, whizzing around. But there must be millions of ones we don't know about. There must be, in the Oort cloud, which is just past the orbit of Pluto. There you go. And lastly, from Daniel, is what colour are the stars? Ah, this is a very good question from Daniel. Uh, the colour of stars tells us a lot about what type of stars they are. So, the colour of stars is the temperature of the star that really determines which colour it is. Uh, young stars start off very hot and they burn a blue colour. As the stars get slightly older, they start to go more whitey yellow in colour, and that's where our sun is at the moment. Uh, at end of life, stars tend to go more of a reddy colour as they start to cool off, and that's where stars like Be Betelgeuse is at the moment. So what colour stars? Everything from blue all the way down through red, uh, even down to this, certain stars known as brown dwarfs, which are very, very deep red in colour indeed. And it tells us a lot about what they top stars they are. Excellent. That's it. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> great. I hope that's been vaguely useful and we've, we've enjoyed, absolutely enjoyed coming to see the pass. And thank you very much. <laughs>